wonder and awe. There was a time when humankind was filled with wonder and with awe, when in the morning the sun rose and gave heat and light and energy, the people said, it is marvelous. And when the sun set and brought cool and rest, people said, it is marvelous. And when the sun rose again, it is miraculous. There was a time when humankind was filled with awe and wonder when the rains came and watered the land and there was enough for the crops to grow and people to be refreshed, but then it stopped and didn't flood and didn't overwhelm. The people said, it is miraculous. There was a time when planted seeds grew and became stalks and became wheat and the people ate and people said, it is miraculous. They were filled with awe and wonder. There was a time when fishermen put their nets over the side and when they came up teeming full When the plagues came and carried people off and then stopped and the generations were renewed, the people said, it is miraculous. There was a time when humanity, all of humanity said, there is an author, there is an originator, there is a creator invested in the order of the world. There was a time when humanity said, that there is certainly an all-knowing entity, that there is a supremely capable being, and this being, this God, is so marvelous and magnificent and so powerful and so expansive that we can't wrap our minds around it. We need images and metaphors to consider this God. to wrap their mind around this originator, this creator, was that of a potter at his wheel. And this divine craftsman would take dust and earth and particles and motes of dust and a little water and mold with his own hands, fashioning the world and all that is in it. And in this morning passage from the prophet Jeremiah, written over 2,600 years ago, we hear this proclamation. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house. And there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making was of clay, and it was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he renewed it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord, just like the clay in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand, O house of Israel. The word of the Lord came to me. Can I not, do I not do with you just as the potter has done, says the Lord. This is not a unique reference to God as potter humans as vessels of clay. It is all through scripture. Dennis Bratcher, an Old Testament scholar from Union Seminary, writes, a potter was a common occupation in the biblical world. While the very rich could afford vessels of silver and gold and carved stone or even glass by Roman time, most people used common fired clay vessels for everyday use and storage. 
These might range from simple plates or cups to very large pots for storing grain or wine. Besides kitchen utensils, many other items were made of pottery, such as lamps and pitchers, games, and molded figurines that served as idols. Although fired clay pottery was relatively brittle and could be broken if struck, it was extremely durable. It could keep contents nearly watertight and resist decay and corrosion. Many clay vessels have been discovered that are in excess of 5,000 years old. Even broken fragments of pottery called potcheries or shards were used as a kind of notepad to write letters, make lists, or practice writing. It is not surprising that as common as pottery and potters were in the ancient world, they should figure in biblical stories. They are and became frequently used metaphors in scripture. The idea of God as a potter patiently shaping the world and human beings to his specifications undoubtedly lies behind the creation narratives in Genesis. This theme of God as potter fashioning or refashioning the world or nations according to his purposes became a common idea throughout scripture. So we have this understanding. Earthware, earthenware, commonplace vessels, breakable yet endurable, used for many, many mundane purposes and some significant task. Earthenware, clay vessels used for mundane and some significant task. We have here such a vessel. This vessel was created before the prophet Jeremiah walked this earth. This vessel is over 3,000 years old. Its sister is in the vaults of the British Museum. It held oil to put on fish to make it more tasty. It held oil to put over bread. It may well have held oil that anointed the newborn baby to celebrate its survival through treacherous childbirth. It may have held oil that anointed the bridegroom and the bride, wishing them, blessing them for a long, happy life blessing them to bring other babies into the world. It may have held oil to anoint one leaving this world for the next, to bless a life well lived, and to bring the person peace and calm as they face the unknown. So have this vessel. Not nearly as old. Not nearly as old. This, also made by mortal hands, fashioned from dirt and a little bit of water, was given to me by the person I first. a bold and brazen thing even to suggest. And this person went to another person, mortal, with dust and water, gave me a vessel that one day might hold 
something sacred to be given to the world. Mundane. Mundane tasks and sacred. Sacred tasks. Significant tasks. Two vessels made of dirt and water fashioned by mere mortals' hands that have had a meaningful life, which have blessed and sanctified human activity. Now consider this. Consider this image. God, God Almighty as a potter, patiently shaping the world and shaping human beings to his specifications. God, as a divine potter, reaching down, scooping up dust, taking a bit of water, moistening it, turning it into clay, forming the clay, shaping the clay, molding, smoothing, perfecting, holding each beginning vessel in his divine hands. Holding each divine vessel in his hands, smoothing it, taking as much time as is needed for this sacred vessel. Imagine. All perfect. No defects in his mind. No defects whatsoever. Everyone, every vessel completed to perfection, to his specifications, to be sacred, a sacred holder in the world. What use, what purpose, what will these vessels hold? What will these vessels pour out? Consider, consider each one of us as the intended unique vessel that God handcrafted. We are the art and artifacts of the world for which he has made wonder of wonders. How will we serve as sacred, holy, commissioned, perfected vessels in the world? How will we bless this world? Think and ruminate on these words. How will we bless the world? What will we pour out on the world? What words, what words of grace and holiness and sacredness and kindness will we speak to our wives? And what words of praise will we give our sons? And what words of encouragement will we pour out on our friends? And what kindness will we give to strangers who are also protected, perfected by the divine ruler? How will we sanctify and how will we make our activities holy in the world? And how will we make our relationships holy in the world? Pouring out that essence that God has put into us as he handcrafted us from the dust and moat of the world. We are God's holy vessels. We are not to be defiled. We are not to be dismissed. We are not to be treated casually. And do we take, do we take our purpose and our creativeness seriously? Brothers and sisters, do we take our holiness, our creativeness, our having been uniquely, singularly handcrafted by God seriously? Do we revere and love and treat ourselves gently and with respect? Do we guard our words? Do we pause before we hit sin? Handcrafted by God, is this the message I'm supposed to release in the world? Do we remember the words of the psalmist 
who wrote of us and of our master craftsman, Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. You are acquainted with all my ways. Well, of course you are. Of course you are because you brought me together from moats of dust and had an intention for me. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. I am filled with wonder and awe at what you have done in me, what you have done in others I see around me. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Brothers and sisters, may we often remember and hold fast to this image, this image of us created as sacred vessels, and may we commit to taking loving, tender care 